because I refuse to not be first. Do we do enough? Well, I never shut up, Barry. Uh, it must have been about 17, 16, 17. We nicked their guilt rings. Right, the bouncer's guilt rings. This is no good for me. That's the reality. If you want the honest truth, and I see it every day. This is Colin McGuigan for IFL TV, proudly sponsored by Everlast. Delighted to be joined by Jamie Moore in Dublin, Ireland. You spoiled the party, Jamie. What did you make of that performance from Chantel tonight? Yeah, mate, listen, for me, um, as soon as the fight was, was asked, we took it straight away. Or we accepted, we knew it was going to be sort of those, that situation where going into the Lions then, um, it was always going to be a big ask. Um, there was the worry about the scorecards, but I, I've always said Chantel has got the right style, and the right um, engine, the intensity to beat someone like Kaya. And Kaya's phenomenal, you know. I can't speak highly enough of her, but I always said, as soon as Chantel, Chantel came to my gym, I said, you've got, the, you've got the right style to beat someone like Kaya Taylor. And if you apply yourself properly and, and, and develop over the next few years, if you get the opportunity, you'll beat her. And so it's proved. In terms of game plan, was it executed perfectly in there tonight, what you planned and what you've done in the gym? <sighs> I've got to be honest with you, it sort of flipped on its head because I expected Katie to start fast. And I'd said to Chantel many times, don't be, don't be put off or too upset if you drop the first two rounds because Katie generally starts really quick and gets stamps her authority and then we'll start to chip away and then we'll push her down the stretch and then we'll win those later rounds. Um, I think Katie knew that Chantel finishes well down the stretch and was really apprehensive early on, didn't want to offload too much to make sure she saved it for later on. And then it ended up, we won the early rounds, Shant uh, Katie sort of nicked some of the middle rounds and then we finished strong. So, uh, so yeah, it wasn't exactly how I planned, but nevertheless, I'm over the moon for it. She seemed to thrive in the Lions' den, that, that away mentality. And I need to give you credit here. As a coach, you go to, you go to these cities, you co go into the opponent's backyards. The first thing you're asked there is about a rematch in Dublin. I'm an Irish man and I don't agree with it. Yeah. I think you should, you, Chantel Cameron should have her own home coming after this. Yeah, I agree. I, I think you're right. And I think fighters, we, we've been in the Lions' den so many times now. Um, everyone gets obsessed in terms of boxing coaching and training with the actual practical side of it. I'm a big believer in getting the fighter's head in the right place and making him understand. So it wasn't anything about the technical side of it or the physical side of it for me tonight, for Chantel. The main obstacle she had to overcome was the psychological side of it. She had to, we had to, so when we trained her for the fight, we didn't just train her to, to, to perform for 10 rounds like that. I had a mind ready for the hostility, making sure she didn't overthink it, making sure she didn't get overwhelmed by the occasion. You know, for me, they're more important. Once you're a fighter at this level and you can perform at world level, those are the little differences where you win or lose a fight. And I kept saying to her in the ring, no respect, and I kept saying tunnel vision. That was, and my two words for her was no respect and tunnel vision. And as long as she stuck to that, as long as she didn't give her too much respect and as long as she stayed focused, I knew she'd win. I think that's testament to you as a coach, but what did you actually do to get her mind ready in this situation? Give me an idea of what that was like in training camp. Listen, it's not just me. Let's, let's, let, let's be brutally honest here now. I, I work with a guy, um, he runs a company called Mind Excellence, Ryan, and, um, and he's done a lot of work with Chantel. So thank you very much, Ra. He's, he's, he's an absolute diamond. He gets the fighters in perfect mindset so that no matter what obstacles they, they, they come up against, they have these little triggers in the mind and they flip themselves and they stay positive all the time. And you see what happened tonight. When you heard that trial called out, did your mind go back to Taylor Catterall, these decisions when you've been in the opponent's backyard or, or were you sad that you'd had that win? No, I've got, I can't lie. I did. I thought, don't fucking do this to us again. But that's why I said just then, thankfully, on a massive occasion like this, we're not talking about the judges. You know, well, we are, but we're talking it in a positive way, which is good that the right person won. So I'm so glad that that happened for boxing, not just for us. I would have been gutted for us, but again, it would have been a f kick in the bollocks for boxing again, you know what I mean? In terms of what you said up there, you said that um, 
Chantal Cameron is now the pound for pound best in your opinion because she beat the pound for pound best. Clarissa Shields tonight had a different view of that fight. She said that she felt that Katie Taylor won most, if not all rounds. What do you make of those comments? <laughs> well, I haven't got a comment about that. If, she, if Clarissa Shields fought, she's got to be trolling. She can't possibly think Katie won all the rounds. Come on, <laughs> you're joking, are you? Honestly, she did say that. So, uh, in in terms of your opinion of how you scored it, what did you score that fight going in? I scored it seven three, so which which is not too far off um, six four, which the other two judges scored it. So well, the draw was harsh. I thought the draw was harsh um, because, but I was expecting maybe the close rounds would sway towards Katie because of the atmosphere and you know judges are human beings and they can be swayed by stuff like that. But I didn't think there was any doubt in my mind that she'd won, but I was doubtful whether we'd get it. Where does she go from here? You know, we talk about the rematch. You've said you want it in England. You want it in your terms, at least. May well be that it comes back to Dublin. Other than that, does she move up? Does she maybe fight Terry Harper, for example? Yeah, I've just said that. She's she's more than capable. I think 154 will be a limit. I don't think she's structurally bigger, big enough to, to go beyond that. Um, but, but those girls who are the champions at 154 at the moment um, are naturally sort of chance around with Chantel's weight anyway. So I think they're, they're some great fights for her. But Katie Taylor's a phenomenal champion, a phenomenal person. And the fact of the matter is we're contracted to a rematch. But, you know, there's options of moving up in weight. Um, but that was such a good fight tonight. I don't, I, I think it's obviously the dust has got to settle. We've got to sit down with the team and decide. But I think if we, if and when we do, Match rematch, Kate, which I think it's it's got to happen again. A fight like that should never not be rematched. Then, um, then some of the terms should be in Chantel's favour. Um, but listen, let's just go and celebrate and enjoy it tonight. Jimmy, thanks for your time. Really appreciate it. Cheers, pal. Thank you. because I refuse to not be first. Do we do enough? Well, I, I never shut, shut up, up Harry. Uh, it must have been about 17, 16, 17. We need their guilt wins. Right, the bouncer's guilt wins. This is no good for me. That's the reality. If you want the honest truth, and I see it every day, 